we can save energy by deep sleeping the ESP32. During this time, the chips do not consume a lot of energy, but also are not responsive. This is why Espressif included a mysterious ultra-low power core, which is active when the main processor sleeps. People say it has to be programmed in assembler, and nearly nobody was able to program it in the Arduino environment. Until now. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. This ULP core does not consume a lot of energy, but it can read and set pins, read values from the analog digital converter and I2C sensors, and finally, if necessary, start the main processor of the ESP32. So the ESP can deep sleep, and if the values of a sensor or other patterns need an intervention, wake up. Very cool. Today we will pimp our Arduino IDE that it can deal with ULP code. We will learn how a ULP sketch has to be structured. We will have a look at the ULP assembler. We will transfer data from the ULP to the main sketch and back. We will learn to deal with registers and the awkward expressive pin numbering. We will build an example project. We will measure the current used by the ULP. And at the end, I will start a challenge amongst you, my viewers, to foster ULP developments. A lot to do, let's begin. The concept is simple. We all know that we can deep sleep the ESP32. It wakes up when a particular condition is met. For example, if a certain time is over, or a pin is touched, or the ULP wants it to wake up. The ULP itself wakes up every few milliseconds and checks sensor or pin values and decides if it is necessary to wake the main ESP32. If not, it goes to sleep again. That's all. As we will later see, the ULP does not consume a lot of energy for this job. The project we will build is simple. The ULP reads several times a voltage with its ADC and averages the results. If this value is below a certain level, the LED is off. If it is between the two threshold values, the LED is on. And if it is above the higher threshold, the main cores are started and the value is printed. But first, we have to pimp the Arduino IDE. Duff 2013 did a great job and created a GitHub repository with a good description. For the moment, it only works if you installed ESP32 version 1.0.0 from the boards manager. But he works on enabling it also for the newest release 1.0.1. Just go there and follow his readme file. In his repository you find a few ULP examples. But you know me, I usually want more. This is why we will work with an example adapted for this video. You will find a link in the description. Download it and copy the ULP underscore ADC directory into your sketch folder. If you open ULP underscore ADC you find three files ulp underscore adc dot ino, adc dot s, and ulp underscore main dot h. The ino file is a normal Arduino sketch. A first look shows us that all work is done in setup and it has no code in the loop. The sketch starts with some voodoo I do not understand. Better leave this part as it is because we know how dangerous it is to fiddle with voodoo. Do not complain if your wife or girlfriend gets a migraine if you change this voodoo part. Then we define the pins we want to use. The GPIO pin numbers used here are the same as printed on the development board. Right after boot, the ESP has to decide if the ULP was the reason for the wake up. If it was something else, it first starts the ULP with a function init ULP program. If the ULP was the reason for the wake up, the ESP executes your sketch. It could, for example, transfer the values measured by the ULP via an MQTT message to your server. 
In today's example, we only print the analog value read by the ADC to the serial monitor. Let's have a closer look at this init ULP program. Again, it starts with a little voodoo and then configures the pins and the ADC. Here, we also set the lower and the upper threshold. The ULP can read these values and check them later as described. This is extremely useful if you, for example, want to change these thresholds through an MQTT message. We also have to define how often the ULP wakes up. This is done here. In our example, it wakes up every 100 milliseconds. The last few steps are some voodoo again to start the ULP and sleep the main course. This delay is only needed because the ESP32 needs some time to write the serial print message to the serial monitor. If it starts to sleep before the line is printed, you would not see it. In production, you can remove this delay to save energy. That's it, no rocket science. And this part can also be copied into other projects. To keep your blood pressure down, we skip this dangerous file and go to ULP main first. Here you find all variables which can be shared between the ULP and your sketch, like the two thresholds or the ADC reading, which contains the ADC value. All variables here start with ULP underscore. And now buckle up. We go back in time to the early 1980s where we had to program microprocessors in assembler. From my video about MicroPython, I know that there are many viewers which love this stuff. Today, it's your day. For the rest of us, do not complain, I warned you. ADC.S contains the code for the ULP. The structure of assembler is straightforward. No discussion if curly braces or tabs are better. Both are not necessary. No if then else, for or while loops exist. Only jumps. It also does not care about small or large caps. And the ULP understands a total of only 26 commands. You find the link in the description to these commands. Now let's cover a few things which might make your entry into assembler easier. For example, you define variables like that. And you assign a value to a variable with dot set. If you define variables as global, you can use them in the ULP main file as seen before. Just add the prefix ULP underscore. Here you see the two thresholds and here the ADC reading variable. This video is not an assembler tutorial. I leave this fun to the tough guys. They will love to find out how it works. Just a quick walkthrough. Here it measures the voltage of the ADC several times and here the average is created. Then it compares this value with a low threshold. If it is below, it jumps to LED off. Otherwise, it compares it with the high threshold and, if true, jumps to wake up where the main ESP32 starts and prints the values to serial. As long as we stay below the high threshold, the LED is controlled by the ULP alone, without any intervention of the main course. The energy consumption is very low in this case. One thing, however, I have to cover because it is quite complicated. The naming of the pins. Let's assume we want to switch the LED on GPIO 27. I mean 27 is the number which is printed on the development board. If we remember Arduino, everything was straightforward. We used this pin number in all our commands. Then came Node MCU and created cryptic D numbers for pins. D1 was not GPIO1. This would have been way too easy. No, it was GPIO5. And D5 was GPIO14. I have no idea why this was necessary. Then came the ESP32 and we were pleased that they went back to the simple naming. 27 meant GPIO27 again. Unfortunately, not so for the ULP. Here, GPIO27 is ULP GPIO17. And not enough. Sometimes you have to use touchpad 7 for the same pin. 
extremely nerdy. The chance you get it right the first time is pretty small and the time you can spend searching for an error can be long. The only explanation I have is they wanted to give us the most playtime per dollar. And really, this factor is much better than any game you ever have played. I am now a spoil sport and show you how to toggle pin 27. As we know by now, pin 27 is ULP GPIO 17 and sometimes also touchpad 7. No, don't ask me why it is called touchpad 7. I'm not intelligent enough to answer these questions. Anyway, this command disables the hold function of this famous GPIO 27 alias ULP GPIO 17 alias touchpad 7. You see it here, zero means disable. What does disable hold mean? The ULP has a great feature. It can keep the status of the pins even if it sleeps. But if you want to change the pin value, you have to release this block. Only then we can change the pin. No, not by writing a zero or one to a register location. That would be too easy. The ULP has one register to set the pin to low and another register to set the pin to high. This command sets pin 27 to high. Where do you see that? By comparing it with the command to set the pin to low. And really, there is a small difference. This character. And no, it's not L or H for low or high. It is C for clear and S for set. In the end, we have to block the pin again using the same command as before, just with a one in the end. This one is too simple, I think. To measure the execution time, I set GPIO 13 to high when the ULP starts and set it to low before it halts. It makes no sense to wake the main course after every ULP run. This program here only runs for 40 microseconds and the ULP just consumes 2 milliampere if it runs. If we run it every 100 milliseconds, the average current is close to the deep sleep current of the ESP32. But still, the system is alert and if the voltage is above 1 volt, the LED goes on without any intervention of the main course. And the main course start if the voltage is more than 2 volts. Our ESP is now like a somnambulist, which sleeps but never falls down the stairs. How cool is that? We could, for example, measure the battery voltage and adjust the length of the deep sleep. To prolong battery life, we could extend the deep sleep period if the battery voltage is low. Or we could count raindrops also during the sleep of the ESP. By the way, where did I get this nice current diagram from? After my review of the Current Ranger and the Microcurrent Gold in video number 245, viewers suggested I should try OTI. It is a mixture between the Current Ranger and the Keysight. It's a power supply with an integrated current measurement. And it includes an excellent software. It is made for professional labs, which are not willing to spend too much money. It is probably too expensive for a typical maker. Back to the ESP32. The ULP also can read I2C sensors and check its value. Only if something has to be done, it wakes the main core. Unfortunately, there are not a lot of ULP examples available for the Arduino IDE. And if they are available, they are not well documented. This is why I start a competition amongst my viewers. I search the coolest project using the ESP32 ULP in the Arduino IDE. The projects have to work and have to be well documented on GitHub. If there are many projects, I will do a pre-selection and present the best five designs in a video. Maybe you are a young engineer or a software developer and want to use this visibility to show future employers your capabilities. The deadline is February 28, 2019 and the video will air about one week later. Then viewers can vote for the best project. The winner can send me a list of goods for up to $100 from Banggood. I will order them and select the shipping address of the winner. So they should arrive free of charge. Dear viewers of this video, 
Now it's your chance. If you have an idea for an ULP project but not want to do it yourself, post your idea in the comments. Maybe you are lucky and find a skilled person who likes the idea. You can also vote these ideas with a thumbs up to help the participants of the challenge to decide. I start with my proposal. I would like an MPU 6050 or a BNO 055 sensors where the ULP checks the movements and wakes the main course if the move has the right pattern. And a particular challenge. I would love a C compiler which creates assembler code for the ULP. Maybe this is a topic even for a master thesis? I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.